Hey guys, welcome back to the Rad High Rocks podcast. We are joined today by Travis Owls. He is a UK High Rocks ambassador. Um, he's a High Rocks world record holder. And when I was going through, I was like, there's so many. So you're a sub 60 athlete. You've got a world record for 12 High Rocks in 24 hours with your mate Callum. You've done the burpee mile world record, which we watched most recently, mental. You've got the High Rocks Relay World Record, which you've just done with Ollie and Charlie and George. And we've had Ollie and Charlie yeah. on the on the show already. Um, I feel like there's just so much to cover. So I'm just going to hand over to you and we'll we'll break down into all these different world records and, and how your High, High Rocks journey's gone. So thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, so I started High Rocks. When was it? It was April last year which feels like it's gone by so quick. It feels like it's been like four or five years since we've been doing the sport, but hasn't really been that long. It's gone from like people calling it Hydrox to now people knowing what it actually is. I know, so yeah. one of those things. You fit um, a lot in in a short space of time, haven't you? Yeah, so I mean, I kind of just took the, took the sport on full force, really. I used to be a boxer um, prior to High Rock. So I was still boxing up until about November last year. Um, so I'd done three doubles last year and a solos last year and then this year it's just kind of boosted and jumped into loads of different stupid challenges and just doing loads of high rocks I guess. Yeah it's awesome so cool well we we were gonna ask to to start with we, if we could go into the relay a little bit because we obviously just spoke to um Ollie and Charlie quite recently and um, we, we need to get George on and then we'll have, have I had y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah exactly um but did you did you know that was coming were you aiming for the world record because it was um in Poland wasn't it? Yeah, so we done it in Poznan. Um, we already had the British records. We got 50 minutes something uh, when we went to London. We were like, oh, boys, we should push for the world record, see if we could get it. We were like, yeah, we'll do it in London XL. So in November, we were going to go for the world record. We got like a last minute relay ticket when we were in Poznan. We were like, we may as well just go see how we get on and then just prep ourselves for the world record, see where we're at. Um, <laughs> and then there were two other teams. There's a Norwegian team and another British team. And they were absolute monsters. Like, they were huge guys. I raced them both in the doubles before, and they both beat me uh, in the pro doubles. So we already knew what they were about. We knew it was going to be, like, a good contest, a good relay. And it was just the three teams all the way through, literally from station one. Charlie beat them on the run, the ski. And then from there, they just kept on knocking us off, knocking us off. Um, i done the burpees and just caught up to them after the burpees. Tagged Charlie in, and he went onto the, uh, the row got through the road from there it's just like cat and mouse you just got to keep chasing uh I came into the wall balls third and we we think I was about 20 seconds behind both teams in the wall balls um and then I just kind of went for 100 reps I hope for the best and then managed to beat both teams across the line when we crossed the line we saw 47 minutes we knew the record was 47 something but we didn't know what it was so we kind of looked up we were like well we don't know we don't know if it's like a world record or not and we were asking the people on the desk if they knew what was going on. Um, and they were checking it for a little bit of time. And then when they said we got it, we obviously were like, no, nah, mission complete. Oh, yeah. Now we just tap out of London because yeah. it's painful. Those relays are painful. Oh, God. I think I saw you put something on your, your Instagram as well. Like maybe a bit about the pressure being... La like doing the last leg and doing the wall balls. And obviously if you came in third and you knew it was kind of all down to you really how did you deal with that in your mind yeah so on that last leg it was the Norwegian guys were in first so they were going and then it went the other British team and then us guys so when they started absolutely bolting it around we were I, I could see them just losing track and they were probably a good 100 meters away from me at one point to the point where the other British team just lapped the other guys. I was thinking, that's it, it's, it's game over. I remember turning this back left corner, just thinking to myself, like, I could either just really slow down, take the third place, definitely secure that, or I could try and speed up and see where I can get to them. Um, the wall balls were slightly outside of the rock zone, so it was like a separate area. Uh, when I came in, both teams were on separate lanes, like how they've got the two lanes of the wall balls. The Norwegian guys were on the right and the British guys were on the left and both had already started their wall balls. So for me, it was like mentally going into that, thinking I've got a lot of catching up to do. 
and everyone kind of knows wall balls you're getting if you do them unbroken you're getting lucky to drop a lot of time like 310 330 it's how long it normally takes um i picked up the wall ball threw it and i was like that feels really light what's going on picked up the four kilo ball so oh, shit. yeah 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 so already mentally i was like oh game over i've just lost a whole rep so i like kicked the four kilo ball to the side and started going with the stick <laughs> And my technique's really weird. I don't know if you've seen how I do wall balls. I do them on my toes. So oh, I get, uh, yeah, yeah, I get a lot of backlash on it. Like you can't squat properly, but I can squat properly. I just like doing them on my toes. So I keep the deck, but I'm just constantly squatting onto the, like my heels. So I was doing my reps and the guy next to me was huge. He was probably like six or five, absolute giant. Um, so I was like, he's definitely beating me here. And I just kept on doing the reps. We watched it back and I was kind of doing two reps to his one. Yeah, so I was catching up, catching them up that way, and then I could hear them say thirty-five, and then me twenty-five, and I was like, right, ten behind, and then they said forty, thirty-five, and I was like, I've got them, I've got them, this is it, and then it hit eighty for them first before it hit eighty for us. But oh, on the live God. stream, we watched it all back, so they put their flag up to so the team could come and join them. Literally, the next rep, our guy put his flag up. And then it just went, it hit 90, I hit 95, 100, and I think they just hit 95, and then we were gone. So oh. it was good. It was did honestly you, the did, most did... intense race I've ever been a part yeah. of. Yeah. Did you, did you do them unbroken then? Yeah, yeah, 100 yeah. unbroken. Which I mean, is so painful. Yeah, so painful. yeah. After and then like where you like, I can't out, drop man. now. Yeah, exactly, yeah. after a max. Well, that's the thing, it's like knowing that you've just gone out and out on a 1K sprint to then finish a station as quick as you can, especially when it's so tight. It was mm. it, it was physically draining, but mentally draining as well, knowing that I've got three lads behind me who have just like really pushed themselves to get us to this point. There's no way I can stop. There's no way. I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. <laughs> how how much did you beat the current world record by? Was it like- Eight a seconds. Eight seconds. Did you think, like just thinking, of of your situation and because of the other two teams, do you think you would have broken it in no. Poznan if those two teams weren't there and pushed you just no. that little? We yeah. we said this to each other. We were like, "There's no way that that became not a world record chase. That was that was a race." Yeah. I looked at my watch after the farmers carry, and I said to I'm pretty sure I said to Ollie when George was running back in from his farmers. I said to Ollie, I looked at my watch and said, "Someone's breaking a world record today." And we didn't know who it was going to be. We were sitting in third place at the time. So we didn't know who was going to do it, but we were all going so far. There was a couple of elite guys in the Norwegian team and we knew that we were up for a, a pretty pretty decent race. And we were chasing the first flag at that point. We wasn't chasing a world record. Yeah. So the difference between like that race and a world record chase is you're constantly looking at the other teams ahead of you, not the time. Mm. So the math is a little bit easier when you've got two teams to try and beat. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah, but and like if, if someone's saying to you, like, speed up, speed up, come on, you can get the world record, versus when you see, like, some guys slowing down and you start to overtake him, you get that, like, buzz, don't you, where, like, yeah. you'd be yeah, like, oh, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm catching him, my cycle rate's faster, I'm going to... But we were we were pulling some faces, like, we were <laughs> in pain, but it was so good. It was honestly, that was the first time I felt like High Rocks was a race, not mm. just going out, doing your time and seeing where you get in, like, an hour's time compared to everyone else. Like yeah. that was, we were all out on the floor together and we all crossed the line near enough at the same time. So when we, when we crossed the line, we waited for the other two teams to cross the line. We got a massive group photo together. Like it was really good. Like the atmosphere was unreal while that relay was going on. It was really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. So, so is, is London still going ahead? Are you still doing a relay or no? Yeah, <laughs> London, unfortunately, London is still going ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I always say to the boys, we should like pick a station out of hat and see what we get. Instead oh, of being yeah. like, right, you're on burp, it's on balls, you're on farmers. I'd much rather just pick out something. And if it's rubbish for me, I'll just be like, I'll just confirm it. I'll just go do it. It'll be yeah. all right. Oh, I love it. You're oh, not no. off the hook then. But So how about, so we've got the, yeah, the High Rocks world record. What about this burpee mile world record? Because I was thinking in the relay, like, who would? How did you decide between you and Ollie who was going to do the burpees? Because he obviously did the forty-eight hours of burpees. You did the. I don't burpee. think Ollie wants to look at a burpee ever again. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> you do, know. even after doing the world record for the burpee mile, you're still not bothered about doing burpees, or? That was I. I don't know. I had never really done like burpee broad jumps before before high rock. Yeah. It was just kind of a thing that I done my 
first one in April. And I was like, oh, we're, we're pretty decent at this. So um, I was like, okay, we'll we'll keep going with that. And then I then kind of got bigger and bigger in burpees and high rocks because I started posing a bit more about them um, to the point where I obviously came first in world champs for the burpees. I got like a sub two minute and nearly killed me. <laughs> and I was like, I wonder what what the world records are for burpees. And I literally just Google searched burpee broad jump world records. And then the mile came up. I was like, may as well give it a go. It was five pounds to enter on Guinness. I was like, may as well do it. Why not? Completely forgot that I um, actually signed up for it. So by the time September rolled round, I was like, better start training for this. But I don't know how to train for a mile of burpees. Yeah, how did you train for it? Uh, a lot of burpees. <laughs> a lot of burpees. Um, we counted how many burpees it was over the mile. Okay. And I overestimated how many it was going to be. I thought it was going to be hitting like 1,000 reps plus. Uh, I'd done 702 burpees around the track. And I think it was more a case of how my hands and knees were going to feel. Because mm. um, where it's like a rubber track, it was just scraping my knees. The first burpee session I'd done, I'd done 100 metres of burpees, walk back, 75, walk back, 50, 25. I'd done that three times through. And my knees were just torn to pieces. Mm. So from there, I think it was just a case of seeing how to adjust things and reps to make sure that I'm not battered by the end of it. Yeah. Um, it, that burpee mile took it out of me a lot more than what I thought it was gonna. Mm. And did you did you focus on like the actual like burpee or did you focus on like how far you could do the broad jump? Um, I think more so the burpee. Okay. More so the burpee. I think the jump is just you. You never know how many reps you're gonna do. I think it was mm. a case of that. It was I'm either gonna do less reps, bigger jump, but are my quads gonna be ruined? Or I'm even going to do more burpees, less of a jump, and my arm's going to be ruined. So I think it all depends on how I kind of do the burpee, I guess. Um, but I just kind of played it how I went. I had a friend, well, I had a lot of friends who came along, actually. But Callum, who I'd done the 12 high rocks with, I said to him before, I said, I'm just going to do one lap as quick as I can. From there, every minute on the minute, you're going to run 20 metres away, and I'm going to burpee broad jumps to you. And as soon as I get there, I'll rest. Next minute, 20 metres. Next minute, 20 metres. And that's what we've done for the last three laps. And he got to the point where on the fourth lap, I think he looked at his clock and he was thinking he could go sub-hour. So he started running 30 metres away. I was like, You're like, this is getting harder. Yeah, I shouted at Cal. I was like, I cannot maintain this pace, mate. Please come back. (laughs) But I was You were so close though, weren't you? Like an hour... Hour 44 seconds. An hour 44 seconds. I'm, I mean, I'm absolutely fine with being over the hour, by the way. Absolutely fine. Yeah, with it. you're not going to go back and try and get sub one hour. If someone beats it, I said I might, but I don't, <laughs> know. I don't know. I don't think the goal now is sub hour burpee pool jump. No, I yeah. don't know. It was, it was hard. It was hard. Oh, yeah. It's just the repetitiveness, isn't it? Like, I mean, brutal. Yeah, I think at the end of it, I kind of stood up straight for the first time and my head just kind of looked like that. It felt like everything was spinning. Oh yeah. No, I was did, you, like, did you fuel or did you could you not really fuel? Because like doing burpees and trying to take fuel on is quite I think it was the most rogue challenge I've done, to be honest. I remember yeah. the night before I was sat like on this table on my laptop and phone just messaging everyone, being like, Can you make it tomorrow at 10 a.m.? Can you make it tomorrow at 10 a.m.? Do I have the cameras? No, right. Run to Argos, get to portable charges, cameras. It was the most unorganized thing I think I've <laughs> ever done. But that just is me to a T. Um <laughs> To the point where I turned up on the morning and I was like, right, who's doing what? So I just let everyone else kind of decide around me. Fueling, I think I had, what did I do? I like having these um like yogurt bowls. So I had one of those and then I had like four litres of water while I was going around because it was the hottest day in September. So, oh, like, oh, so of course it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally last week, uh, first weekend of September, I think. Yeah, it I was. was boiling on that Saturday. And then the Sunday chucked it down. So... I think I, mean, I was kind of winning on that front. Yeah. yeah. Imagine the chafing if you were soaking wet doing that. For, yeah, that's for that's what that I was brutal. thinking. Mm. It was it was brutal. And obviously, as I went on, trying to pick your body up off the floor when your t shirt is drenched from sweat anyway. Yeah. And if you you want the support from people, people are way happier when the sun's shining. So at yeah. least like <laughs> it was definitely the most anticlimactic thing people have watched though. It was the case <laughs> of we had to say to the cameras like three, two, one, go. 
And all you then saw was me hit the floor or jump. Yeah. Right. And this is it for the next hour. Okay, nice. Oh, oh my God. Fair play though. I'll take my half to you. <laughs> um, okay, going off burpees um, and more towards your background, you said boxing. Yeah. Um, how do you think the boxing has helped crossing over into high rocks? I think boxing is what, so when I was 18, I got into boxing. So I hadn't really been into it for long. Um, that's what kind of shifted my mindset and discipline into sport. Okay. Before that, I was a gymnast football player. I kind of dabbled in a bunch of different things. Uh, and then boxing is really what turned sport around for me. I started knowing um, more so what fitness was. Instead of just going out and trying to be fit, it was what is fitness for me kind of thing. Um, obviously, getting punched in the face a lot and having to try and hit someone else kind of clues you up for how much you should train so you don't get hit. So I think it was a case of I then found the balance between um, going too hard in training and not hard enough. Yeah, that makes and sense. like boxing is like renowned for brutal training sessions, isn't it? Yeah. Like the boxers are so fit. I'm guessing you're really good with a skipping rope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my <laughs> double-unders are all right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I kind of got that, that again to loads of time, but it's all discipline, I think. It was... I never jumped into the ring for my first boxing match and I was never like Mike Tyson straight away. It was one of those things where that's where I first learned that you have to lose to win. Yeah. You have to get those, you have to get those knockdowns to then in the future realize that you can go higher up within what you're doing. Um, there were many times where I had many lows in that sport and then there were many highs because of the lows. And I think mm -hmm. that's what that taught me was that you could be at rock bottom within your sport, but the more you train, the more you work hard, and the more determined you are to get it, the higher up you're going to be. That's such a like such a good point. I mean, we were talking about that today when we, we were just coming back from the gym on the tube, and we were like, sometimes you've just got to be vulnerable. You've got to put yourself out there, and then when you do a race, you like learn lessons from it. Whereas if you yeah. you keep training, like a lot of people say, oh, I'm not ready for higher ups, or I'm not ready for like any any sport competition or a marathon or whatever. Sometimes you just got to do it, and then... That's you learn thing. from it, don't you? Especially high rocks, because it's a repeat of the same disciplines, not like CrossFit or anything. You can go away and look at where you need to work and how you can get stronger. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a case of, it's two things. It's taking the leap and going and doing it and then not being afraid to fail. Mm. Yeah. They're the two things that people, like I always used to be, I just wanted to win. I wanted to win. If I didn't win, I'd start crying on the sidelines. But yeah. it's better to lose sometimes than learn from those from the loss. You don't learn a lot from winning. You learn yeah. that, yeah, you can do this. But from losing, from failing, you learn so much more. And then in the future, that's where the win starts to happen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so true. And then what about, like, I guess, for boxing, you're very fit, you're very strong. Endurance, is that, like, did you find High Rocks quite a long race in comparison to your training or obviously more running how did that kind of evolve from boxing into high rocks so for boxing I was but my sessions would start with a five kilometer run but I was oh. never a runner before high okay. rocks so it would just kind of be a 5k jog that me and my teammates would go do and then we'd do our boxing session but I never thought anything of the 5ks mm -hmm. um about when was it about April time 2022 so while I was still boxing my friend put on his Instagram story about an ultra marathon he was running in like a team relay so he ran up and down Mount Snowden as many times in 24 hours I stupidly said yes <laughs> I was one of his teammates for it that's what started the running so at the same time as boxing I was also ultra running <laughs> that's where the whole mindset shifted the ultra running is it's one of those things where you can either do it really fast but obviously really fast is still pretty slow yeah. So the runs that I've done have been like 24 hour races and stuff like that, where you are running for that period of time to see how far you can get. Um, when you're running for that long, it's a case of obviously endurance, but then my, like mental capacity as well. How far can you push? Uh, that's what got me more into the running side. So when High Rock started coming around, it was a case of I know I can run. I don't know if I could run fast, but I know I can run. So now let's switch up the running training to then go into more like interval sprints and 1k efforts and stuff like that and yeah, you, that's cool. 
Yeah, have you enjoyed that change? Like, have you enjoyed... It's a lot harder. Yeah. It's a lot harder. Running fast is difficult. It's really hard. Um, yeah, I have to be fair. I mean, now I don't box. I'm putting high amounts of effort into running and strength training. So it's like the perfect balance. Whereas ultra running, I know that I can go out to the trails for 24 hours and eat whatever I want and yeah. go as slow as I like and it will still be a decent race. So there's like two different sides to it all, but they're both just as hard as each other, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, totally. And then how did you find out about High Rocks then? So like, how did you go from boxing to go and give High Rocks a go? So I got a, gym, uh, I got a job in a gym that does functional fitness. It's called okay. Unique Gym in um, Saffron Walden towards Cambridge. And they, my boss has done a high rock. So he done Birmingham way back, way back when there was like 400 people competing or something. It's crazy um, to think of that now, isn't yeah, it? Like, it's just mental thinking. Of that. So I think it was, when would it have been? October, two years ago, maybe. Mm. He'd done it. Um, and a few guys from the gym done it at the same time. And when they came back, one of the guys from the gym who I coach, Alex, who's my doubles partner, he just kind of went, there's people doing London in April, do you fancy doing it? I went, yeah, sure, why not? We'll give it a go. Um, and then my bosses were saying that they wanted to get sub hour. So we were like, I just want to beat my bosses. So I guess we're going to have sub hour. That's all I want to do. <laughs> so then we raced against my bosses. We came across the line with sub hour and we qualified for Worlds that year, which was a month later in Manchester. We were like, well... It's only in Manchester. We may as well just go do another one a month later. We've only done it once. We didn't know it was the pro weights. So we rocked up, not knowing that we had to push a 200 kilo sled. My wow. first ever high rock session, I couldn't move the sled at all. Yeah. Yeah. So going from that to the pro weights, done that one. And then from there, it's just a case of I might try the solo. So flew out to Milan, done the solo. And then we were just, it was a knock on effect from there. Yeah. I was just kind of fell in love with the sport and just loved everything about it. The community is so nice um like actually doing the sport everyone's cheering you on it's quite an intimate experience where everyone is shouting at you they might not even shout at you but they're shouting so you're yeah, like oh, yeah it's for me I just keep yeah. going. so it's really cool i just like the way that the sport's set out and how it's kind of going in the direction that it has yeah, yeah agreed i mean we had a similar thing i think we did the same thing as you we went to london just for the first one did it and then qualified for worlds and then we were like shit we only just managed to push the sled in the open weights yeah. and then we found out it was the pro weights and we were quickly like scrambling around trying to find a gym that we could try and push a sled the, the jump is massive <laughs> yeah and when you're not used to when you've only done one race so you've only done an open race it was like doing a new race again isn't it it's like yeah everything starts again and it's totally yeah different. that's it i think the good thing about hearts is people are still learning so no yeah. one knows the the best way to train like no one knows it yet everyone is still learning and they're all on their own journey do you need to run more do you need to do more strength do you need to do these compromised runs no one knows the right way of training yet that's why yeah. the sport is so accessible for everyone because you can train how you want as long as you get around the course doing 8k and eight stations you've done it 100 yeah. yeah and it's it's interesting because everyone is coming from different backgrounds so like you've been a boxer and like obviously a gymnast you've obviously got like amazing core strength and probably find the burpees super easy where somebody else that's maybe a bit taller that you know as a different background as just a runner might not like find it as easy and it's like everyone's just got such different backgrounds that no one's coming through as a high rocks athlete which I guess yeah. give it 10 20 years like kids are going to come through as high rocks athletes yeah that's the thing but like, right no now one knows no where one... it's going to be no one yeah. knows where it's going to be next year no one realized that it would be as big it is as it is now this year I know, so it's crazy. the journey that's taken is massive i i personally think it's just gonna keep going up i can't see it dropping anytime soon yeah no i'm with like um but just in the last couple of days like tia Toomey said she's gonna give one a yeah, go isn't she and with that. big names like that come in you're just like well if, if she's getting interested to give it a go more like, and more people are gonna do it. it's like the nick bears doing it in dallas nick well. bear yeah exactly. so everyone's like if nick bears doing it he's gonna shake yeah. up the game but we're like we we don't know we don't know if he will if he won't it's everything. gonna be interesting isn't it to see yeah. how he does i mean he's not gonna do badly is he That's... i'm excited to see it all I'm excited yeah. to see it all. and where these big names are coming through it's exciting to see if like someone's a runner for instance if mm. they're if they're gonna be really good on the runs but can they do the stations if yeah. they come through as, I don't know, like a boxer, are they going to be good at the stations, not the running? So you get that perfect balance of it all. It's really cool. Yeah. No, 100%. Definitely. And then on the training side of things, I wanted to ask, do you, obviously you've done your fair share of double solo relay. 
do you train specifically depending on which race you're going to hit because obviously like relay you're doing a max out 1k and then trying to do your wall balls unbroken and then when you're doing a solo you're obviously pacing it more like how do you find training for the different disciplines in high rocks so i kind of have like all my races in mind i've got my whole calendar out um I always use my solos as like my A race. They're the race that I'm going to do well at. So I'll always train specifically for solos. Okay. When it comes up to like the doubles and if it's a pro race, an open race, whatever it might be, I hope for the best when I do the doubles. And the relay, the relay is just a laugh. Like we are there just to have a little bit of a laugh. Um, I think it's and one to of suffer. Those, yeah, yeah, <laughs> suffer. But I have a laugh while doing it. I think it's one of those things where the relay is now getting more and more competitive. You will get people who train specifically just for that. Um, I think by all means, go do it because it's a good race. And I think there's going to be some ridiculous times being put down very soon by some some teams. Um, but I'm always, I want to, I love doing the doubles. I love doing the doubles, but I really want to be like a solo elite athlete. That's my goal. So I kind of train for those pro solo races uh, and then do the doubles and the relay on the side for for fun because I feel like if you leave out the fun side of the sport, you're never gonna you're never gonna succeed in it because you're just gonna lose the love for it one day. So as long as yeah. I keep mixing up my races and doing it with different partners, doing it with the with the relay team, and then doing the solos, probably going abroad for them because I'm much for a holiday out of it. <laughs> then I'm gonna keep the love for the sport. Yeah, yeah. That, that's so true, isn't it? And then on that, do you think, like, because we were just talking about people's backgrounds, do you think down the line, everyone will start to train for specific things? So people will just train, like, there'll be a specific athlete that comes out that races relay and a specific athlete that comes out that just races doubles. And then it's going to be a slightly different athlete that's going to be a singles pro. Like, yeah, do you see, think it's going to end up interesting. Like I think there will be. And people thought that I was a specific relay athlete just because of the burpees. So oh, I think yeah. there will be. Um, but I think it's just a case of I've only ever done a relay on the same weekend as doing a race. And I think that's the best mm. way of doing it if you want to start doing them now is because they're so quick and short, you're probably doing maximum 20 minutes of work. So it is effectively like a short cardio session. Um, and the teams that are competing in it, they've all kind of done the race before. Like at the World Champs, all of those teams, they all competed during the during the day, the day before or on that day. So I think it's just, it's one of those things where the race is so quick that you can train specific for it if you just know what two stations you're going to do. Mm. But it all depends on the team that you're putting yourself in with as well. Mm. And if you're doing yeah. a mixed, if you're doing a an over, uh, if you're doing like the women's or the men's, it all depends what yeah. team you're with. Because yeah. then it's a case of if I was doing the mix, am I still going to do the burpees and the wall balls? I don't know. Yeah, that's yeah, true. I know. It all depends. <laughs> Yeah, because usually they say, well, I think generally in the mix, they more put the men on the ergs because they can make more time than the women. So it's like, yeah, it, it's tactics as well. Yeah. yeah, I think there definitely will be some teams that just go to places to do the relay. I think that's happening very soon, yeah. especially now like the world. Because I think the world record stood for near enough a year. Yeah. So I think now that it's just kind of been broken, people are going to be like, oh, we could break that. And then they yeah. just go to a place. They'd go do the go do the relay and just the relay, which is absolutely yeah. fine. I'm I'm all for it. I want to see yeah. some crazy. I want to see like sub forty five minutes come out. Yeah, there's probably. I mean, there probably could be some absolutely rapid. It's times. definitely possible. But what it's, I found yeah. what I found crazy about the whole relay thing when we done the um British record back in London, Ronkovic just broke the open re solo record at the same time. So he done fifty minutes, whatever it was, and we done fifty minutes. We were like, how has someone done that solo? So it just shows that right. although it's the relay and you've put down 47 minutes, someone could possibly do it solo. Oh, that's the thing I with mean, these times. So, yeah. yeah. I know. It's still so young, isn't it? There's so much that can happen. And there's still like well, so many athletes that haven't found it yet or different sports that you just like. Yeah. It's even the times from like last season to this season. Mm. Now people are training more specific. Like I've started being more specific with my training and I drop five minutes from my open time. So I yeah, think that's, that's just how it's kind of going now. People are training specifically for high rocks. And yeah. I think that's what, what's going to create a sport is people are going to want to push the boundaries of what they can do and push the times that you see produced. 
now being sub 60 in higher rocks for in the men's open just seems to be a thing yeah. now more and more like the top 10 are all sub 60 whereas last year there was no sub 60s or if someone yeah. done sub 60 you're like how then that's incredible yeah. now all the top 10 to podium you've got to have sub 60 in an open so it's it's getting to that point yeah, yeah. It is. it's growing and growing isn't it and then what what were your like first impressions when you went from like obviously boxing and I'm sure you've been in a ring with a crowd and stuff but when you came to I know you, you talked about like the crowds shouting you at, at a high rocks and having the atmosphere what were your first impressions of like walking into like was it what did you say London was your first one yeah yeah London, what were your yeah. London Olympia what because that's a good that is a good venue and that's the yeah. first one we did like it it does have a really good atmosphere London Olympia what did it's you the ring at the top mm. so I remember coming in and we kind of we waited in the queue and everything we went to the top ring and you could see the floor from the top and we were we were like the third wave in so we were still pretty early and it wasn't packed up the thing that was the most overwhelming part of it was that Red Bull tent because you don't know when to get in there. So you're in there probably like, I think we were in there a good 10 minutes before, just watching oh, wow. the screen count down. And we were like, oh, here we go. And we were just <laughs> looking like, what, what are we meant to do for the next 10 minutes? We were just jumping on the spot like, yeah, it'll be a good race. Everyone from my gym was in the same same uh, same wave. So we were all just talking. And then it hit two minutes and the heart starts racing. Yeah. And it plays this like really cool video with like the hype music. And you're like, right, here we go. <laughs> okay, nice. And then you do what everyone else does and just bolt it straight yeah. to the ski. And then you gassed out by the ski. And that was the first time. And every time it happens, I'll get to the ski, absolutely gassed. And then my mouth just goes really dry. Yeah. And then from then on, you're like, right, now this is going to be painful. Yeah, this is going to be painful. Embrace but after it. that, you start seeing it fill up. And then you're looking around for the person that you're like, you've come here with, who's watching you. And you just see all the faces around you, just random people just shouting at whoever they're shouting at. Like, this is actually really cool. Really cool. Yeah. It does feel like you're in that kind of stadium approach to it all, where everyone is kind of in there shouting at anyone. And you're just like, yeah, this is, this is really cool. I just remember on the burpees, on my solos in Milan, I was in so much pain. I kind of put my hands on my knees, looked up, and there's this random person who just, like, said something in Italian. I was like, they're telling me to keep going. Okay. <laughs> Can't let him down. <laughs> I was like, they told me to keep going. I'll keep going. So it is that whole thing of there are people watching you and it makes you feel like accountable to keep moving. And it's yeah. quite motivating to know that even if they are shouting at someone random, they still looked at you and you're like, right, they're rooting for me. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's nice though, because it is that like you see people multiple times if someone comes to watch like it's not like we've I think we've said before on a marathon where it's an absolute nightmare to try and cheer someone on because you can yeah. see them at like the start and then maybe mile 18 and then that's about it like whereas you can try and follow someone around and see them at every station yeah, and on the runs. and then you'd always do that station and look out for that person all the time like yeah. you're doing the ski and every time you look up you see them in the middle of the ski you're like oh they're here okay <laughs> on the row when you're just actually staring at them oh, I'm in so much pain I've done that too many times you look at the screen on the row and then you just look in the corner your eye that's still here okay yeah. another, another four minutes of this don't worry <laughs> must keep going must yeah. keep going and they're shouting at you but you're there like yeah I'm, I know I know I've got nothing I'm, at, I'm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm so I've got tired nothing left, but yep yeah, I know you're still shouting at me. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone can relate to that yeah. absolutely it is just a pure suffer fest isn't it you kind of go into it knowing like it's not gonna you're just gonna suffer so you've just got to be okay with with suffering yeah, you? You just that's gotta, it. it's just you just getting that hold and I think if you see everybody else you see that everybody else is suffering as well I don't know it's like everyone's yeah. hurting it's just yeah. people and are hurting you finish, you're like, oh, I'm done that's it and then you look at something like I've been through that pain yeah don't yeah worry. yeah I've been, too. I've been there too it's that kind of thing. I think that's where the community side of it is so good. Mm. Just because everyone who's done it knows the feeling. They know the yeah. feeling of what it's like when you cross the line. Yeah. So it's one of those It's one of those sports where I think the majority of people that I've coached haven't only done one now. Once they've done one, they've straight away, they've booked another one. Yeah. It's one of those things that it sucks in the moment. But then once you've finished it and you've crossed that line, the sense of achievement is yeah, massive. Agreed. So then yeah. you another one. And I, I think people know. realize they can push through it. I yeah. don't know. You realize, yeah, like everyone hits that moment where you're like, "Oh my god!" And you're like thinking, "Oh, can I just walk off? Or oh, can I just take yeah, a second?" We've all been there. Yeah, but yeah, then yeah. everyone gets to the end, and you're like, "Oh, you can do it. You just gotta keep going, don't you?" Just like 
that one more and I think it doesn't matter who you are you, everyone's doing the same thing and everyone's suffering together like I think that's that's the best bit of it like you could be you're on the track with like who could have been elite athletes and you could yeah. be on the with someone who's literally never run before in their life like yeah. my dad's done a high rocks I've done a high rocks with my dad so it's Amazing. just that side of thing where it's like I know that he was never an elite athlete I know that he's this is like the biggest challenge he's ever had like within sport and I'm sharing it with him and he's on the track with loads of other people who we were in the start, like the first start wave. So there are some absolute units in that. I'm like, my dad's just stood here with me. His first ever high rocks, first ever running race. And he's just kind of just going to tick along with it all. And he's sharing yeah. the track with those athletes. So I think that means something to a lot of people as well. Yeah. Where you and are, how did, how did he find it? How was that doing it with your dad? Like, oh, was he was like... Cool. <laughs> at some points did he like come across to you and be like what have you done to me <laughs> oh there were some funny or, points there were yeah. some funny points. <laughs> did so you stay friends did... throughout or... <laughs> yeah to be fair I think he just couldn't speak so it kind of <laughs> but um we done it in yeah that was April this year in Olympia so he done his first one Olympia I done my first one Olympia so it kind oh, of it's okay. quite nice to do um and I just remember doing the first round of it we came to the ski last in our wave and I looked, I was like, right, I'm going to start going really fast just so we could try and get like a half decent time. And we done the sled push and we got to the sled and obviously I was kind of fresh. And I just ran with the sled and said, right, your turn. And he looked at me, looked at his watch and he just goes, Travis, I'm at 190 on the heart rate. I've got to slow down. I went, you know, come on, let's go, dad, come on, keep moving. So it was, it was funny. But on the burpees on that day, my dad had never done a burpee. So oh. he said, he said to have some rest, please just do all the burpees. I just looked at him and went, stay close i got <laughs> 20 on the burpees on that day and i think from what i've heard i think that's the quickest ever solo burpees in high yeah, a minute i mean 20. that's ridiculous a minute, a minute 20 so i done those and you had running after you like yeah, fuck's yeah, sake. Yeah, i was gonna get some rest down, yeah. yeah he didn't get any rest which <laughs> was even funnier um and then we got the whole way around i think it was a case of the rest of it i kind of wanted him to do 50 50 I wanted him to like give it a go. Enjoy it and do yeah. it. Yeah. That's it. And then we got to the wall balls and he struggled. He struggled. He done, I think maybe like 10 wall balls in training. And he was telling me like, I don't know how I'm going to do it. 10 more than nothing. Balls. Yeah. So he just said to me, right, I need a breather. Just go do the wall balls. So I done, I think it was like 50 reps. And I gave him the ball. I went, right, just do five. Just do five. And his first rep, he just kind of folded over. Didn't squat, just like hinged over, looked at the target threw it and I just caught the ball <laughs> <laughs> go again it's all right go again so he, it was good it was really good and then yeah when we crossed the line he, he loved it he absolutely loved it oh, to the so point where he's now done a solos in Birmingham no oh way. amazing yeah and was he cursed solo. how did he find the burpees without you being there was he like oh shit this is actually quite hard yeah 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 I was there watching him cheering him on the whole way 13 minutes of pain is what is what his burpees were oh I mean, that's Fair play to him. Decent, though. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was funny to watch because he was in like the middle of the burpees, and you could see people doing their burpee, looking up, see my dad laying on the floor, and they were like stepping to the side, going around him. It was a spectacle. It was great. Oh, it nice. was good on him. Good. Yeah, on. No, to be fair to him, he smashed it. He did smash it, and then he done the wall balls as well. Yeah, um, his wall balls took him fifteen minutes, but a hundred wall balls, like everyone knows it, is painful. And at the end as well, like yeah. just yeah, the fatigue. Yeah. Even if you did a hundred wobbles fresh, you you know it's not it's not enjoyable. So yeah, at the end, of... like you do ten, you can do ten as quick as you want or as slow as you want. But you yeah. know you still got another ninety. So you're like, yeah. oh, this is gonna be so long. So but he done it, he done it, and I think he's he's happy to do. We're doing doubles again in November in London. Amazing. He's gonna get, go do another solos as well. So he's got the bug for it. He has, hasn't he? Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. awesome. It does show though it is for everyone and like to team up with like family members or friends or like you can just yeah go and enjoy and suffer together <laughs> yeah. like. in the moment not yeah. too much enjoyment afterwards loved every minute of it yeah loved every minute of it and exactly. he still posts about how he came first in the burpees and I just love it oh <laughs> it's so, so good funny. <laughs> like, yeah came first in the burpees in my doubles my <laughs> and then what about future races for you what's the what's on the cards what's the so plan? i've got 
three in London XL. I'm doing a doubles with a friend, doubles with my dad on the Sunday, and then the relay again. Nice. Uh, and then I'm out to Marseille the week after for a pro solos. Oh, and cool. then after that, uh, I'm looking at going to New Zealand to do a little bit of traveling and then get a tie in the high rocks over there because it's going on, so why not? Yeah. Uh, and then Warsaw in April doing the pro solos. And then out to Worlds, a qualified for Worlds in Manchester. So off to Chicago. Oh, amazing. Yeah. That's nice. good. Quite spaced out as well. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's it. I've had quite a crammed few weeks. Like, this is mm. going to be my first weekend without a race for the past three weeks. It's <laughs> quite nice to know that. Yeah. Um, because they all just kind of pile on at once. Yeah. Um, and then you get caught up in the moment. You're like, I want to race again. I want to race again. Get yeah. started. Like, shouldn't have said I'll race again. So. There's but, so many now, isn't there? There's so many op- opportunities. And like you said, people are using it for travel and stuff as well. And you're like, oh, I really want to go there. And then I might as well <laughs> yeah. do a, a race while I'm there. Yeah. And then you like message your family. Like, oh, I'm going here. Do you want to come along for a little holiday? But I am racing. But you can't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, it's all up. really cool. It's all really cool. And I think that's the best bit of it is the fact that you can go away, see places. Mm. And you'll always like now I'm kind of within the community is you'll see someone from that you might have seen like London last year, and you're like, oh, hi, and I'll see you again. You just get talking to them. You're like, oh, yes. it's good. I'm spoke to the race as well. It's quite mutual in that respect where people are now travelling to do the races. I know loads of people that went to Paris at the weekend and everything like that. So it is really cool. Yeah, nice to catch up. And yeah, yeah. everyone's just kind of got this mutual respect for everyone, which is Yeah, really that's nice. it. And there's no, there's never something like, oh, you don't deserve to get this time. You're not good enough to do this. Mm-hmm. There's never been any of that. It's just like, you deserve that. Well done. Like, that's yeah. crazy. You've done and it. And I think that's why High Rocks has done so well, because I think everyone like lifts everyone up and everyone wants everyone to do well. And everyone can appreciate when someone puts down a time that's like, mental you're like fair play yeah. like yeah. looking at your guys times like pushing that relay like every single one you're like fair play because I think like in my mind I'm like I can imagine just how much you suffered to do that you know I think everyone can just appreciate like you saying how fast you just did the burpees I'm like god that just like it's fast but you must have suffered to do that because it, it's a suffer fest when you're not going yeah through. heart rate went up Definitely. yeah and I yeah. think that's that's why I don't know whether because so many people can do it and appreciate it and appreciate the the pain that people are like so happy for people when they do well because they understand how hard you must work to get there and like yeah. what you go through, I guess. That's the thing. Yeah. Everyone knows how hard the training is to even amount to that point. Mm, so it's just yeah. good to see everyone kind of giving it their all mm. and then crossing the line, getting their badge and then just being over the moon about what they've just done. That's yeah, the thing. agreed. Yeah. So do you have any tips for anyone? I'm going to ask on like the mental strength side, because obviously you've done a, a lot of challenges. You've done your ultras and it all takes a lot of like mental strength. Like what would you kind of take with you going to do your pro race in Marseille? Like how how do you tell yourself like you can do it and to keep going and get over like the demons? So for me, I kind of use like a one second trick it's knowing that you've been to a place before that's probably been worse. You've, you've felt worse within a race. Even if you haven't, you, you know that you've battled through other things. It's remembering that and a split second decision, you can even say, I'm going to carry on or I'm going to quit. Mm-hmm. It's one second decision. If you just yeah. choose to carry on, you'll carry on. Yeah. And then it's the feeling, knowing that you will finish, you will be done at some point. So just keep hammering on until that point. It's just having confidence in yourself. That's the main thing. Have confidence knowing that you are capable to do it. And yeah. then keep pow- just keep powering through. Yeah, because I think it's really, like, and it's very impressive, like, and proof of your mindset showing, like you said earlier in the relay, that, you know, you could have just stayed in third and secured third spot and you could have been happy with that. That's an incredible, like, result as well. Um, But to be able to, like, it's like that next gear to to push to to yeah. keep going like that's the ma- that's mental talk in your head in my opinion that's all your mental strength not your physical strength yeah, like yeah. because it's definitely just belief in yourself like the way that you speak if you speak to yourself in a negative way when you're doing these races like you'll never do it you're never going to be able to do it then you're just going to prove yourself right mm-hmm. if you start to speak positively and just saying what if what if you have done this before You've been in worse places, push through it this time. If you start getting and start ticking through that side of things, 
then you can do it. You'll amount to a lot more. And if yeah. you don't do it, use that as a lesson for the next time you go do go and have a similar situation. Yeah. yeah. That's a good no, point. Totally. And then we haven't touched on the your 12 high rocks in 24 hours, which obviously is going to be a mental battle as well, yeah. because I'm sure you had some lows in that, in that, or you thought, what the hell have we done? Why have we taken this on? <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. that is actually like, yeah, talk us through it. Like, where did the idea come from? And so yeah, how did it go? That was, so back when I done the April high rocks uh, last year, I kind of came up with the idea of doing an ultra marathon within high rocks. I was like, why do I not try and do 12 high rocks in 24 hours? And that was just the idea. So I went to high rocks and said, uh, I've got this idea. Can I do it? And then they mentioned that Jake did and was doing the, um, the 12 in two days. Yeah. I was like, it like, it sounds really cool, but I would kind of want to do one where it's just 24 hours straight. I want to see how far I can go, because that's what I had done previously for ultra marathons. So I, w- I wonder what I could do in 24 hours. And then I was like, I've never done a solo at that point. So I was like, I'm definitely not going to do it solo. I'm going to try it doubles yeah. first. Um, and I didn't have anyone in mind like at all. And then Callum, who he's been my best mate for years. He's never done an ultra marathon prior to that. And he just kind of went, <laughs> I'll do it with you. Why not? Let's do it. That's a good um, friend, that is. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I was like, mate, let's do it. We've, we've got to do it. Let's just do it. And he had never done a high rocks at that point when he said yes. Never done a high rocks. So we both went out to Milan. We'd done a high rocks. We then done a doubles in Glasgow in March. And he loved it. Just as like He's done loads now. So just as much as I loved it, he loved it. And he was like, right, let's just crack on and do it. So we were training together as well, which is quite nice. We live quite close to each other. We went to school with each other. So... We live quite close where we can just train together. And it was a lot of running, a lot of late nights and everything like that. And it hit a point where, so in training, we'd done two high rocks back to back. It was absolutely fine. Four high rocks back to back and Callum struggled at three. So we were like, now it doesn't seem doable. We then went to go do eight high rocks back to back. Callum done four and I had to drop it down to six because then I'd done the last two solo. And we were like, this just does not seem doable anymore. That was a month and a half out. And then at that point, it was all mental. It was just a case of if we're going to do this on this day, we mentally have to believe that we can do it. Mm. Otherwise, it, we're going to get to the day and it's just going to fall apart. I made it into so the gym that I work at is where we've done it. <clears throat> I made it into a bit of a charity day. So we were raising money for Macmillan and we could have teams of four do it next to us so they do all the runs together they split up the exercises as a four while we're cracking on with our ones um the strategy that we had was we do a high rocks every two hours to hit the 12 mm-hmm. so we do a high rocks in an hour and a half 30 minutes rest go again and we just clocked through that so we had the time slots for the teams and we had I mean, an hour and a half three. is still like yeah that's a decent time mm-hmm. for yeah back to back like I'm trying to do mental maths here not very well but how much running did you do in total 8k times 96k yeah like god what made the running even harder was Saffron One's quite a hilly area oh, no. so we done a 500 meter out and back so we went out the gym oh. popped to right and we went up the hill <laughs> touched the fence and came down the hill and the hill is a hill like the, the road is called Shire Hill oh <laughs> man hill um and yeah we've done that 96 reps of that hill is what we and it, anyone that's run like ultras or a lot of like long distance running knows actually like going up's not too bad it's coming down like your quads and your knees coming down how was yeah. like how was yeah. it coming down the hill because i feel like over knowing time, what i've been like that's over crazy. time it was so painful yeah but because of that the lunges killed us oh, the yeah. lunges absolutely killed us the wall balls are absolutely fine weirdly it was the lunges. The lunges absolutely killed us. But um, yeah, so we done, when we got to, I think it was about four, I had the biggest pain in my side. And it, I didn't know what it was at the time. It was just excruciating pain to the point where, where every time I would come down the hill, I couldn't breathe properly. So I thought for me, five, six in, it was like game over. That that could have been it. Um but I remember resting. We've got a documentary out about it, so I can't say it. It was trapped wind. So I was there, like, <laughs> pressing on my stomach. 
Oh. And then it all kind of came out, which is quite nice. It was all right. So after that second win, and I was a player <laughs> again. Um, and then over time, I was absolutely fine. But in my mind, the I'm glad it happened so early on because we weren't even 12 hours in at that point. And all I was thinking was our last one, we would go off at 10 o'clock. So we started at midday on the Saturday. It would finish midday on the Sunday, which meant our last high rocks would start at 10 a.m. All I was thinking was at 10 a.m., there's four people coming to join us and there's going to be a packed out gym of people wanting us to finish. Yeah. I've just got to get to that start line. That's all that was going through my mind. Just get to that start line. So once we'd kind of got through that pain, Callum started decreasing over time where he was getting quieter and quieter. The pain was getting worse and worse. We hit 10. My knee went, my left knee, uh, no, my right knee was really playing up um, to the point where running was just really painful. Callum, you can see on his face, was not here for it. We'd done the 10th. We'd done the 11th. And after the 11th, it was just like, we, we've done it. At that yeah, point, yeah. we knew that was it. So, I'm like, bawling my eyes out in the shower. <laughs> and then Callum's there, like, get the massage, looking at me, like, yep, yeah, done it, thank God. And then that was it. We kind of started the started the um, 12th. We had, like, 40 people running with us at a time. We had, like, Amazing. a packed-out gym full of near, like, 150, 200 members. And it really, like, it was, it was unbelievable. Such a special day that, like, it was just incredible to see so many people watching. And because I coached the majority of them, near enough, everyone would come in the next week and just say, what you've done was inspiring. Mm -hmm. I've signed up for High Rocks or I've signed up for this. I've signed up for that. I want to do this. So it was inspiring to see that I, like myself and Callum, inspired other people to do things. So, yeah, that was that was really cool. Crazy idea, but really cool to do. Crazy idea, especially with a hill. But yeah, 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 <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Oh no, I mean, it the is, ideal though. place would have been to do it at a high rocks. That's yeah. that was the goal. <laughs> it was just going to be at a high rocks flat track. Would have been ideal, but <laughs> because obviously trying to keep like Excel or Olympia open overnight is near enough impossible. Exactly. I was happy to do the gym. Yeah. Oh no, it's it's amazing, and it it is incredible how many people get behind you and want you to achieve it and come and support and it does have a knock-on effect and it does inspire people to sign up and one then seems more achievable to someone because they're like oh well if you if you've managed to do that like oh, I'm not the fittest but I'm sure I could give one a go like it, yeah. it is that kind of mindset and seeing someone else really push themselves to their I think it's also the thing of what I say to everyone is I didn't start off like this like yeah. I remember in lockdown, I would go out and do my first ever fight. They were doing the five k challenges in lockdown. Yeah. And I went out planning to do a five k. I got, I think it was like six hundred meters in, thinking I had done five k, absolutely blowing. I looked, I was like, not even hit a kilometer. Came home, got a bike, cycled the five k instead. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not superhuman. I'm the exact same as everybody else. I just stuck with it. Was ter- determined enough, and over time built up the fitness to the point where I'm at now and hopefully going to be higher up in the future. That's just the determination you've kind of got to have. We all start from somewhere. It doesn't yeah. start from running 96K and doing 12 higher oxes. It starts mm-hmm. from going out, planning to do 5K, doing 600 metres and folding. <laughs> get a bike. <laughs> yeah, get a bike and they're doing it that way. Fair play. It's ridiculously slow. So it looks like <laughs> 5K times, to be fair. <laughs> consistency is key for that's sure the one. that's yeah, the one and, and we talked about your future like races have you got any future challenges like have you got any more crazy challenges coming up i feel like no not not, not right that, now yeah, yeah. So the snowden the snowden one we kind of do every year we've gone back yeah. for three years we so the team of three we're the winners of that ultra marathon three years in a row Oh um, man! We, so you can't, you got to retain your title. You can't let it go, can you? I hate that mountain. I hate <laughs> it. I don't want to go back. But we get invited back every year, so we're probably going to go there again in July. Um, other than that, I've got nothing booked. But my mate Ted, who I do all the running with, he just messaged me saying, "I want to do this." I'm like, "Yeah, all right, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump on board. Okay." So it's that I like that side of the community as well. Is just you meet someone who's just as crazy as you and say, say, yeah. should we do this? And you just kind of, I'm a yes guy. I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, yeah. who knows? Who yeah, knows exactly. What's... So there will be something. I just don't know when. Yeah, watch Fair. this space. 
Um, well, I think that leads us nicely on to the last eight questions, the cheeky insights, if you're happy with that. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Perfect. So the first one is what shoes do you wear to race high rocks? I wear on cloud monsters. I get asked this question to be fair. On cloud monsters. I don't see many people wearing them. No, that's a new answer. I don't think we've had that one. Yeah. I do I've like worn, on though. Yeah, yeah, I use them for my first race and all the way through. I've been wanting to change them up. I'm like, don't change what works. No. Yeah. Maybe good. that's the key to the burpees. Uh, oh, yeah, there you go. It's the shoes. Soon Everyone will be wearing them now. <laughs> yeah, they've got springs the in them, I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Good answer. Okay, next one. Which has been your favourite venue to race in? Oh, uh, that is a good question. <laughs> I reckon XL. I like XL. Close to home. Yeah, fair, fair. Close to home. It's quite a like quick course. Only two laps, I think. One of the bit laps. Oh, nice. Yeah, I think yeah. that makes a difference, doesn't it? If you don't have to count, I can't count laps for sure. Yeah, Manchester was hard. Manchester yeah. was really yeah, hard. Yeah, it's quite but, small. Yeah, XL, I reckon. It's a cool venue. Nice. Um. <laughs> Do we need to ask this? Which is your favourite High Rock station and why? The Burpee <laughs> and the Warbles. I, I, I was going to say, it must be close after that relay. Yeah, you like must be like, two. Warbles must be getting there. Yeah, I do like those two. I do like those two. I don't know why, really. Just Burpees kind of click with me and Warbles because I've just suddenly become all right at them. So yeah. <laughs> Bit of explosive strength, I like yeah. it. Um, okay, next one. I know you've done a lot of doubles High Rocks, but if you could do a doubles with anyone in the world, like famous, dead, like sporty, not sporty, oh. an idol. Is there anyone you would choose to do a doubles high rocks with? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, Put you on the spot. I don't know, a boxer. I, know. I would like to do it with Usain Bolt because I feel like that he could oh, be okay man. and it would make me look so fast. <laughs> He'd be good crack as well, wouldn't yeah, he? Imagine would. what a good crack he'd fun. be. I reckon I'd do it with Usain Bolt. <laughs> yeah, that's such a good one. I like that. That's a good one. I don't think we've had anyone say Usain Bolt yet. No. Yeah, I like that. Okay, next up. Do you fuel for high rocks like during the race? And if so, what do you have and when do you take it? I don't. I don't fuel during. Um, it's something that I've looked at doing, but I've never really got round to trying out. I feel like I need to try it in training before I try it in race. Do you have um, anything like immediately before or like, do you have like a routine of like, I always eat a banana 30 minutes Oh uh, yeah, so I always have a chocolate croissant. Okay. <laughs> always have a chocolate croissant. There you go. Always. I'll go to, no matter where I'm at, I'll always make sure I have a chocolate croissant before I race. Like, well, Marseille I, will be all right then, won't it? No, no, <laughs> You'll so get a right tough. decent one before yeah. that race. <laughs> nice was so good. <laughs> it wasn't just one sort of class on free race. It was great. It was so good. <laughs> well, that's cool. But maybe, yeah, maybe test out the fueling. Trip. Yeah, the gel is in race. If I did take it, I reckon it'd be on the rower. So I feel like that's halfway through. Yeah, and, so. yeah. cool. Um, Next one is, what's your favourite type of training session for High Rocks? Like format or session of the week i think it's like partnered conditioning oh, i like nice. the partnered oh. running of high rocks because again it just keeps training fun yeah and it's definitely one of those trainings that you look at and you be like i don't want to do this today then your partner might say the same thing then you do it and at the end you're both like yeah glad we've done that so those yeah. are where it's like partnered compromise running or conditioning they're good yeah that's a good answer i like that um next one is why should someone sign up for their first high rocks it pushes you out of your comfort zone yeah. if it's something that you're not used to or it's a brand new race it pushes you mentally physically and the atmosphere is unbelievable yeah very true very true second that and then lastly is there anyone that you would like us to speak to and see on our podcast except george and <laughs> yeah, um, um, no, we do need to get george we need to complete the relay team yeah i know, yeah. I know. <laughs> maybe that is the best answer um <laughs> yeah if there's any or anyone else that you would want to hear from or a type of person within the high rocks world uh i know that greg rocks life has interviewed him but nick bear i'd like to see what else you could pick apart from him yeah, yeah fair yeah that's true um the post race one maybe but... yeah i was gonna say maybe how he's found it after the race yeah. would be would be good get an insight once everyone yeah. finds out his result i feel like that's oh, no. like god he's got so much pressure on him hasn't he? oh yeah big time like, yeah 
I, I reckon I'm, he loves it though. I think yeah, he yeah, for sure. But it's a yeah. privilege, isn't it? I feel like people like that like thrive off the pressure. Like some people can't like deal with it, but I feel like he's one of these guys that will just deal with that pressure. Yeah. And it'll kind well, of he's made like a whole thing of it. I was saying this is how yeah. you realize how big the sport's got. When Nick Bear makes a whole video releasing that he's doing high rocks. Yeah, like, yeah. Now you know that the sport's gone somewhere. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Very very yeah, crazy. So um going forward then, Travis, where can people find you? Um, like follow your your races if you come up with another challenge, like where where should people go to? <laughs> so Instagram's probably my best. Uh it's just Travis Owls, so T-R-A-V-I-S, and then Owls is O W L E S. Um, you'll find me on there yeah that's where I post all my crazy challenges and all the high rocks that I'm doing in the season Get perfect the top tips for the burpees yeah there yeah, you go that's definitely. it <laughs> and then like a quick one just because I feel like it needs a shout out as well your your high rocks relay team and George like runs is it th- th- how do you theta. say the theta that. yeah give us give us yeah. a bit of a lowdown on that because we're seeing it on everyone's is it a new like is it a clothing brand or what's oh so, yeah the... so theta is a clothing brand uh jules brought it out i think it was the back end of last year um and i mean we've got to the point now where he's got a fair few of us on the team there's me ollie charlie there's joe bingham he's got shane jack there's a fair few of us that are all on it uh dean as well all doing uh, high rocks, um, is it? High rocks specific? High, yeah. Yeah, we all do high rocks. So all fitness racing and high rocks. Um, and now he's got the brand as the fittest team in fitness racing. So the fastest team in fitness racing. Fair. Uh, yeah, because I saw you guys all and I was like, oh, fair play, that's gone quite well. Yeah. Hasn't it? So. so I mean, we he obviously it's a clothing brand, George has started, but it's for him, he wants it to be more than just a clothing brand. He wants to show that we're all real athletes that haven't like, we haven't got sponsor or anything like that. We're real athletes that just want to perform within the sport. And that's what he wants to portray through us and through his clothing. I mean, you've done all right, haven't you? (laughs) That's a good start. (laughs) Hopefully we can keep it up. Yeah, Yeah. totally. Um, Oh, that's awesome. And we'll, we'll link that. We'll link that um, in the show notes and then obviously well yeah we'll try and get George on and then he can, he can talk a bit more about where that came from and the fastest relay team in the world. Um, um, perfect well thank you very much for your time it's been absolutely awesome to have you on um really looking forward to seeing what's going to be next um how you go and maybe some people could take the tips from the chocolate croissant (laughs) before they race it's the key (laughs) if you take anything away um to everyone that's been listening thank you so much for listening to the podcast um you would really help us out if you follow the follow the show click and subscribe um, if you want to share this episode, please do tag Travis in it. Give us a tag. And um, yeah, we'll see you on the next episode.